Hello, everybody. Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker, and I am the owner of the PPG store here in Baton Rouge. And let's see, I just want to make sure that I am logged on like everybody else. I was running behind, but I got my cake, though. I got my cake this morning. The one that I wanted. I see a lot of y'all enjoyed that, um, that fantasy that I had, which I'm gonna um, put it into put it into play tonight. Um, when I finish this live, I'm gonna try to run down the street and see if I can find this chef hat. And if I cannot, which I'm pretty sure I will, if they're not too pricey. Then uh, option number two is going to be um, red thongs and blowjob bib with the red mask and the chantilly cake. And my, um, I got a tarp that I'm going to cover my bed with because I plan on having a lot of fun with this cake tonight. Literally all over him. Bitch, I'm going to have cake all in my hair, all in my eyelashes, crack on my ass. Cake going to be everywhere. I'm a, oh, I'm a sucking fucking with the cake, but I'm gonna be covered in cake before the night over with. So I plan on having a lot of fun with that. All right. So it looks like um, it's a good bit of you all that have logged on so far. And I wanna welcome you to Sex Talk with Sharonda. And today we're gonna be talking about skin orgasms. Yes, we're talking about skin orgasms. This is one of the 12 types of orgasms, okay? So if you have questions, please send your questions. I'll be glad to answer them for you. Let's see. Okay, skin orgasms. Some people reach orgasms at the touch of their skin during a massage, a facial, or any other type of stimulating activity to the skin. Okay. If you have ever talked to a massage therapist, a lot of times they will tell you about their client that they did a massage on and the client actually reached an orgasm. Most, if you're a massage therapist, so you talk to a massage therapist, this is some of the things that they learn in school that there are certain body parts and pressure points that you can touch. That has nothing to do with the genitals, but it will bring you to an orgasm. So, this morning I was on my Instagram and um, one of my male followers basically was like, you know, Sharonda, are you just making this stuff up? Like, are you coming up with this stuff? Like, you know, basically, or is this like true, you know? So I had to educate him and let him know that here in the United States, like here, especially down south, I don't like to say in the United States, but down south, we are taught reproductive sex education, meaning that we are taught sex education, um, basically dealing with our genitals. In other words, when I start talking about mind blowing sex with a soft penis, that goes over people's head. Because in their mind, they feel like, how you have sex in the, in the penis soft? There's so many different types of sex that does not even require you to use your genitals at all. But it can still be mind-blowing. But a lot of times it goes over a person's head because their mind is programmed to believe that sex can only be done one way. That's why when I get to doing my series on sex and disability, we're going to learn about how people that are disabled can still have a full sex life, right? So basically what I had to educate him and tell him was that you're thinking of sex from a reproductive point of view, meaning only with your genitals. I teach sex from a tantric point of view, meaning that you incorporate your mind and your body and you use every part of your body. You stimulate every part of your body from the hair follicle all the way down to the toenail. That's the type of sex education that I teach. Meaning you use what you got. You use every part of, of your body that you have. You even utilize your mind. 
And the reason that you have to do that is because what happens as you get older and these genitals start falling apart and they're not working no more. You mean to tell me that I'm not going to be able to have a fulfilling sex life because my mind can only think about my genitals? I want you to think beyond your genitals. So when I tell you to ride his dick, scratch his head, and suck his thumb, I'm trying to teach you to stim I'm trying to teach you to introduce other forms of stimulation other than just stimulating his dick. I say that, and a lot of times, you know, the, the lesbians on here talking about Sharonda, you keep talking about heterosexual sex. I talk about the kind of sex that I participate in, but you can take it and apply it to whatever type of sex you're having. So that means that sometimes, um, even when you're a lesbian couple, you have to just kind of pick and choose and say, okay, well, she said, eat the uh, cake off the dick. Okay, well, I, my woman ain't got no dick, so I'm going to eat the cake off her pussy. You get what I'm saying? You, you replace the body parts. In other words, what I'm trying to get you to understand is it's not so much about the body part. It's about the sexual act in itself. It has nothing to really do with the body part. Because I could still do all of this shit with this cake if my husband didn't have a dick. How would I do it? I will take that cake and I will put it all over his body and lick it off all over his neck, all over his face, all over his nipples, all over his legs, his feet, wherever. I'm trying to get you out of the mentality of looking at sex from the point of view of genitals. I'm trying to get you to understand that you got to take care of the whole person from their mind to every other part of their body and stimulate them everywhere. So my sex education is different. That's why I stopped calling myself a fantasy lady or fun party lady and all of this kind of stuff because I'm a hardcore sex coach. That's what I do. That's my gift. That's what I'm good at. Okay? So I'm just trying to make sure we got enough people on here to move forward. Okay. It's about 30 of y'all on here. That's enough for me to get started. So let's talk about skin orgasms, okay? First of all, this may rub some of y'all wrong, but I have to, I teach real life, okay? Have you ever heard of children humping? Or have you ever humped yourself as a child? It's just a yes or a no. If you never heard of children humping, that's when everybody got their clothes on and they on top of each other. And they in sexual positions and touching sexual areas with all their clothes on, hardcore sweating and going at it like they really doing some shit, but ain't, ain't nothing to actually happen as far as penetration going on. But there is something else going on. I'm just trying to see. Okay, I got yep and yeses and all of this kind of stuff. Why do you think these children are doing this? A lot of people say, oh, because they doing what they saw their parents do. Or because they being grown. Or because somebody that touched on them and all of this kind of stuff. But let me tell you why these children are doing this. A lot of times we don't understand it, but children have nature too. They like skin to skin contact. They've always liked it. Even when we birthed them as babies. They, we swaddle them, we hold them, we take their skin and put it up against our skin because the skin-to-skin -skin contact feels good to them, okay? Remember, orgasm is about pleasure. It has nothing to do with ejaculation. I'm going to repeat that. The, the definition of orgasm is about climax and pleasure. It has nothing to do with ejaculation. Ejaculation is just a byproduct of orgasm. I'm trying to mentally change your mindset when it comes down to what an orgasm actually is. Um, sexologists have recognized 12 different types of orgasms. The one that we are the most familiar with is the clitoral orgasm. That's the most common one. But today we are talking about the skin orgasm, which has nothing to do with ejaculation, but it has everything to do with pleasure. When you first meet a person and you dating this person and you first meet them, 
they can reach over and touch your hand and your pussy start going crazy. Your pussy like this in your in the seat of your pants. It's just going crazy. Seriously, this happens. I know that it happens because it has happened to me. A person can kiss you and your body just going crazy. And it ain't got nothing to do with them touching your genitals. These are skin orgasms. These are orgasms through contact of the skin connecting and touching. Or just from the simple feel of touch. Okay? These are one of our five senses. And when we start making children feel like, okay, we teach them, okay, you're not supposed to do this because... This is uh, activity reserved for grown people because children can sometimes go too far and you don't understand what it is that you're actually doing. I know you're doing it because it feels good to you because that's the reason children hump, because it feels good to them. It gets them going. It arouses them because they are human. They have nature just like we have nature. But you have to explain to them, I understand it makes your body feel good, but you cannot do this because it's not appropriate. But we don't want to have them kind of conversations. All we want to do is whoop ass. That's all we want to do. We want to beat them because they, they were being human. So that's where the parenting comes in at, and that's where we have to come in and explain to them that this type of thing is reserved for people that are older who understand what they're doing. I understand that it feels good to you. It's no different than them touching themselves or masturbating. I never stop a child from masturbating. I just tell them that it's supposed to be done in private. I understand it feels good to you. However, you can't just whip your little penis out everywhere and start playing with it. You go in the bathroom and you do that in your own private time. See, we have to start teaching sex from a sex positive perspective and stop making everybody ashamed of sex, okay? Another thing. Have you ever had a man to walk up behind you and just breathe on the back of your neck or kiss you on the back of your neck and then all of a sudden your pussy just start flooding and getting wet? It, it just it got wet because you experienced pleasure, skin orgasm, okay? So we're going to talk about some of these other skin orgasms. This one is called flirty feet. It really has nothing to do with feet, but this is a, a, um, a cooling massage lotion that you can use all over the body and when that person is massaging you they can blow on your body and actually give a cooling sensation when they are massaging your body another one that we have which is full of vitamin e and shea butter this one is pure instinct massage lotion okay then we have what's called a Wardenburg wheel. I'm gonna open this up. A lot of y'all see this on, um, y'all see this and y'all automatically become afraid. Like, it's always fun to me when people walk in the store and they say, what this for, Miss Sharonda? You see that? It has little pricks on it. I wanna see if the camera goes on in on it. Can y'all see? That it got little pricks on it, that it got little sharp edges. Can you see it? Just let me know. If you can't, then I will get up so that um, you can actually see see it the way that I see it. So let me know if you can see that it got all the little pricks on the wheel. You can see the little wheel turning. If you can see it, just let me know. Let's see. I'm going to keep moving it. I'm hoping that y'all can see it. I'm going to keep moving it. All right. So basically, if you take a man and you blindfold him, I just think that sometimes skin orgasms are more intense when the person is blindfolded. Okay? I'm glad you can see it. I'm seeing it, everybody. You know, it's always a little delayed for me. I'm a, I'm a few seconds ahead of you all. All right. So you blindfold him. When you blindfold a person, you make the skin orgasm a lot stronger just from blindfolding them, okay? So what you do is you take this pinwheel, right? And you trace along their skin with it and you apply pressure. Now the thing is, some people like to apply more pressure than other. 
You don't want to apply enough pressure to prick the skin, but you want to apply enough pressure to where they can actually feel what's going on, okay? And this will bring on a skin orgasm. A great place to do this is the fatty areas of the body, like the breast, like the thighs, the buttocks area, anywhere that there's a fatty area to where you can actually press and get deep into that tissue with this pen. Okay, so it's gonna leave like little track marks on there and that's perfectly fine. But people always see this and they think that, oh, you hurt, you're hurt, gonna hurt the person. No, you're not gonna hurt the person. All you're doing is giving them a different type of stimulation that they're not used to. Works great when you blindfold them. Back up in there. All right, another form of stimulation we have is the massage glove. Should have had this open before I went live. I really want to show it to y'all. All right, here we go. Okay. I almost got it open, y'all. All right. So this is what the massage glove looks like. As you can see, it has all of these little balls on it. The purpose of these little balls is to provide stimulation all over the body. Okay? And these little balls rotate in a 360-degree motion. So that it's literally like you rolling these little balls all over the body, all right? And your hand actually goes in it like a glove. Okay, so you actually wear it. You see that? And you roll it on the skin, okay? Which is another way to bring about a skin orgasm. Now suppose you may not wanna do the glove, we also have the ball, same thing, just a different form of stimulation. Again, for those of y'all that are just logging on, we're talking about skin orgasm. And with this ball, you just hold it like this and you roll it all over the body and apply pressure, okay? You think you like that, Rolly? <laughs> We're still talking about skin orgasms. Neo One. Now you see that this is electro stimulation. Okay, this is a skin orgasm that actually stimulates the nerves under the skin. So this is a whole nother level, and I'm gonna actually take a day to do a class on this by itself. I probably have to do it at home with my husband because he likes one. I got one at home. I didn't want to open this one up. This is a high price. Um, this is $150, so I'm not about to open this one up when I got one at home that I use on my husband. And I'm pretty sure he will be all for me doing a demonstration showing y'all how I shock him because <laughs> that's the kind of stuff that he enjoys. Okay, the last thing that I'm going to talk about for the skin orgasm is your feather. Your duster, you could get one of these from Walmart. These are number $3. It brings a whole nother element to your sex life, okay? I actually learned this from an old woman about waking men up with, uh, with feathers and all of that kind of shit. Like, old women be teaching you some shit. They are the true definition of using what they had. And they, like, this the shit they had at home? They turned this shit into a fucking erotic sex toy. Some shit that they cleaned the house up with. Now, I'm telling you, don't use this to dust the house and fuck up him, mess with him, because you know you got allergies and all kind of shit that you got to deal with. So with that being said, if this is gonna be your tickler to tickle him or for him to tickle you, then that's what you use it for. Don't um, mix your dust with your body and all of this kind of stuff, okay? But yeah, old woman is who turned me on to waking a man up with a feather, okay? Yes, ma'am. That's who turned me on to it. I pay his attention, baby, and I listen. I'm going to tell you something else. Because old women, I ain't going to say old women, but because old people understand the business that I'm in, and some of them really understand the need from it, sometimes they will actually share with you 
different things that they used to do back in the day before, you know, because they used to have to go all the way to New Orleans to go and get a toy. If they wanted a dildo or some shit like that, or a vibrator or some shit to plug in the wall, they had to go all the way to New Orleans to get it. So a lot of people, they, they didn't go to New Orleans often. So they had to utilize the things that were around, you know. So this feather was one of the things that's around. So again, you take and you blindfold him and you trace his body with this feather, bitch, you gonna watch, he gonna bitch up. He gonna bitch up. He gonna bitch up on your ass. Now, with skin orgasms, we talked about sucking the knees. That's all a part of skin orgasms. Stimulating other parts of the body other than the genitals, okay? Or dual stimulation where you sucking his knees and beating his dick at the same time. Some of y'all talking about, oh, well, my man ain't with it. He didn't enjoy it. And that's perfectly fine. Everybody not going to like everything. I have learned that over the years. Everybody don't like everything, but there will be something in this group that they're going to enjoy. You just got to figure out what it is that they like. And sometimes they don't even know what it is that they like. Because they haven't experienced nothing. And some men are just closed-minded. And anything that you do outside of traditional sex, in their mind, you're doing too much. But you have to know the man that you're dealing with. And you know that you, if you're dealing with a closed-minded papa. If he's a closed-minded papa, and that's what you who you with, and you feel like you want to turn up in the bedroom, then you do the things that please you. Meaning that if he a papa, and he don't want to introduce no feathers and sucking on his knees and all of this kind of shit. Well, bitch, you might need to go get the cake and fuck him with the cake with some lingerie on or something. Find something that he into. Or he may not even want you to put the cake on him. And that's fine. That's perfectly fine. But, bitch, I will take that cake and put it all over my pussy and fuck myself with a toy and let him watch me suck that shit up off my dildo. That's the kind of bitch I am. Yes, that, that's the kind of bitch I am. Like, you're not going to deprive me of my sex life. You're not going to deprive, deprive me of a good time because you ain't into it. In other words, I don't have to touch you with this shit and I ain't got to do nothing with you with this shit, but you can't tell me what I can do with my own body. Now, this is the feminist part of me coming out. <laughs> All right. So, with that being said, that is going to wrap up my talk about skin orgasms. I hope you all learned some stuff up in here today about skin orgasms, what it is and what it isn't. If you learn, clap your hands, clap your hands because I got, I, I wanna, I'ma end this live right here for YouTube. So YouTube, if you saw anything you like, go online to my website, www.dppgstore.com. Thank you for continuing to follow the store. Thank you for continuing to shop online. Thank you for continuing to come in. I'm, I'm just glad that everybody is learning.